we are the ones that can make sure that we change the lives of everyone in this world. It's about the people outside. It's about our nation. It's about the next generation. It's all about teaching. When they try to solve a problem and that one strategy doesn't work, they go to second strategy. They go to third strategy. Mentorship, of course, is a very important element of this program and a key aspect of the institute and of the whole compact uh, since its beginning. So not only are students coming here to network, to perhaps feel this extraordinary energy and get inspired, but they're also being helped to become professional and to, in a way to become professionalized in the area of, in the field of academia. From almost every state in the union, from over 200 different colleges and universities, in more than 100 fields of study, two-thirds of them in science, technology, engineering, and math. Each year they come here. The Compact for Faculty Diversity Institute on Teaching and Mentoring. For two decades, the Institute has helped nearly 10,000 minority participants earn their PhD and compete in the academic marketplace. This gathering is about our future. The goal to build the diversity of our nation's faculty so that it reflects the students it serves. Over 1,200 scholars and mentors all in one place to learn, to network with others, to get inspired. It's just amazing to be here because it really is inspiring. You know, it's, I don't need to tell anybody here that it's difficult but we do inspire each other, we do support each other. We've all been given an abundance of blessings, but now is the time for us to stand up and go out and give back to others. One of the sponsors of this family of scholars, mentors, recruiters, and friends is the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. Graduate life is hard anyway. Uh, in the sciences particularly, you're further isolated by being in small groups in laboratories. Um, some of the programs, um, uh, here and, and elsewhere that are targeting minority students at majority institutions are talking about how they can thrive as the only. And here they don't have to thrive as the only. They are the majority. And it's a very powerful bonding networking experience with first class professional development programs. From early morning until night, there are dozens of development sessions all designed to help scholars manage their career. To make sure that students have the, the tips, the strategies that they need to have success in the doctoral program, and once they get into a faculty position, to make sure that they have, they're, they're armed with everything that they need to make that career a success. It could be in teaching, it can be in mentoring, it could be how you get, your, get through your dissertation when there's writer's block. I mean, how do you deal with that? How do you compensate for those kinds of things? Um, what do you need to know about the job interview? We're covering a lot of skills here that they need to have to navigate first the graduate process and then secondly, getting into the academy. Managing stress, writing proposals, negotiating a faculty position, teaching the millennial student, mentoring students of color, getting published. There are sessions here for each stage of the PhD journey. Starting from their first year as a graduate student all the way through their final years as graduate students, the building blocks they need to make the right decisions about how to craft their careers. And it just minimizes the number of pitfalls they have. It doesn't guarantee anybody anything, but it increases their chances of having the career they want as opposed to the career they get. A doctoral program is worried about you getting certain grades and accomplishing certain tasks. This institute allows for more fulfillment, more growth, more development, more understanding of the intangible feelings that you're going through. Those intangible feelings can be a challenge. Research shows that minority scholars are more likely to experience feelings of isolation and alienation during their long journey toward a PhD. When I came to this conference, it really re-energized re me. Um, but, you know, it, it was ebbs and flows. And even in 2011, when I was writing my dissertation, I actually, this is a true story, I actually Googled um, dissertation induced depression just to see if it was a real thing <laughs> so I was like wow this isn't this isn't normal 
Aside from a good sense of humor, what helped him was a mentor. A mentorship is that you want to mentor people to become better than you. At this luncheon, three faculty mentors of the year were honored. In fact, every year, several mentors are named and applauded, all in order to send a message to everyone here. A good mentor is vital to a young scholar. I would tell anyone that your faculty mentor, your specific department chair or a faculty mentor, is the most important relationship you're going to have. Each day, there are several breakout sessions that explore how to become a good mentor so that one day this generation can effectively mentor the next. No one gets a PhD in America. No one. I don't care what race, creed, belief you have, no one gets a PhD without somebody helping them. And it's, it's based on an apprentice-type model, uh, and the mentors are key to that. There is also a job fair during the four days of the Institute. Over 50 institutions come each year to recruit because there is no other gathering in the nation like this one. So for those who recruit like me, and that's their job, and that's what they have to do all the time, this is like walking a kid in a candy store. During these same four days, there is another conference going on, the Junior Faculty Professional Development Conference, where new faculty members talk, listen, ask questions about the challenge of being both a minority and a teacher at the college level. Here, they learn and they support each other. About this institute, one last thing, perhaps the most important of all. You get positive reinforcement, you get a lot of hugs, you get a lot of encouragement, you get a lot of um, reminder about your role and responsibility as a minority student, and it's, it's an experience. Your role, your responsibility to give back, it is a theme repeated over and over. It really gets to a point where you say, this is not about me. It, this, this is not about Oh, I'm having a bad day. Oh, this experiment isn't working. Oh, I can't stand these people. They get on my nerves. You have to finish. Like it is, you, ha you don't have a choice. You do not have a choice. What are you gonna do? I mean, are you gonna, you gonna tell people that you quit? You gonna tell people that you couldn't do it? Because then what? What does that say to the next one? Andrea Graham has a husband, three boys, and a PhD. I thank them for allowing me to be me and never letting me quit because I wanted to. But my husband will always say, this is bigger than you. And I want each of you to know that this is bigger than you. While we're going here and we're doing our own research, remember that people are watching you and somebody will be better, dream bigger, and search higher because you didn't quit.